Hello, my name's Nick Bruterman. I'm a viola player in the Philharmonia Orchestra. This is my viola. As you can see, it looks very much like a violin, and in many respects, it is identical in its mechanics. It's just perhaps one inch, one and a half inches longer, uh, which creates a lower sound as the string length generally is longer. We share three strings with a violin. The violin has a top E string, which we don't have. We have the A, and the D and the G. And the bottom string that we have that the violins don't is the C, which is one octave below middle C. The viola sits in the middle of the orchestra in terms of range between the violins, which are the high, and the cellos and the basses, which are the low. Normally we play with a bow, and when we play legato, sounds like this. If we play detaché, which is separate bows. We can play off the string. We can play fast off the string. We can play ricochet, where the bow bounces but in one motion, like this. We can use the wood of the bow to create a percussive effect. We can play close to the bridge. This is the bridge here. This is called Ponticello. This creates a very icy cold sound. Or we can do the opposite of that, playing over here, which is called Soltasto, over the fingerboard. Which is a much softer sound. The usual sound would be in the middle. Like this. We can also use our fingers to pluck the strings. This we call pizzicato. Another variant of pizzicato will be the Bartok pits or the snap pizzicato. And often by contemporary composers, we're asked to play slightly stranger things, for example, knocking the wood of the instrument, or playing behind the bridge. So in the Haydn, if we were to play it on the string, it would sound like this. But we play it off the string, which is much lighter. Wind players have their breath to naturally phrase and put direction into their music. Um, string players, of course, breathe when they play, but it doesn't have the same natural effect as the wind players. What we do have, how however, is down bows and up bows. The bow is weighted much heavier at the frog, which is this end here, than at the tip up here. And because of that, naturally, if we're playing a heavy note, a louder heavy note, we'll use a down bow. And then the result is a lighter up bow. Sometimes we will want to use several down bows in a row because every note is a heavy note. For example, at the beginning of uh, the Sixth Symphony by Mahler. Viola's had a somewhat chequered history in terms of symphonic repertoire. The early symphonies used the viola often to double the bass line or to fill in the harmony in the centre of the chords, often coupling the second violins with the complemental figures. In other words, we rarely ever get the tune. So a viola part will often sound like this. As orchestral writing developed, composers were a little more daring with what they were willing to try with the viola section. For example, in the Symphonie Fantastique, in the slow movement, the violas are given a tune.
In addition to more interesting parts for the viola section, composers started to write far more solos for one viola player. As we head into more contemporary orchestral music, you will see that composers place no restriction on the viola at all and do not typecast the viola. So for example, in Salonen's Violin Concerto, there's a solo for viola and cello. So as you can see, the viola, like all string instruments, is very versatile but we sit right in the middle of the orchestra with the heart of the string section. If you've enjoyed learning about the instruments in the orchestra, why not try our iPad app, The Orchestra, featuring Essa Pekka Salonen and the Philharmonia Orchestra. Fully interactive video playback lets you view the orchestra from all angles, and the revolutionary beat map shows you who is playing when. Follow along with synchronized scores. Hear the inside scoop in audio commentaries and get a 360 degree view of all the instruments. Available for download in the App Store on iTunes.